Hey, my name is Blossom. I want to welcome y'all to the show today. When I tell you I got a great speaker for you, her name is Miss Tammy Hankins. I'm not the one to gossip. So go get you some coffee, call somebody, and come on back. Welcome back. My name is Blossom. Like I said, today I have a guest speaker for you. When it comes to addiction and alcohol and drugs, this young lady has a powerful story to tell. But like I told you, I'm not the one to gossip. But today I want you to help me welcome Miss Tammy Hankins. Thank you, Tammy, for joining us today, girl. I've been telling these people about your testimony. But like I told them, I'm not the one to gossip. So I'm going to let you tell them and just let them know what all God has done for you. Thank you. I appreciate being here. Girl, you know how to talk. Come on now. Don't, okay, girl. Don't, okay. don't be acting like you don't know how to talk. <laughs> okay. Just just like we sitting at home. But you know what we want you just to tell the people out there in the in their living room while they're sitting there drinking their coffee and eating their donuts that you can be delivered, but you gotta want it for yourself. Okay. All right. Hi, uh, 18 years ago I was homeless, drug addicted, ninth grade dropout. Uh, walking the streets of my hometown, Jasper, Alabama. Okay. Strung out to anything, mind and mood altering, crack, pills, weed, wine, you name it, I done it. Okay, so how old were you when you started with the addiction? Well, that's funny, because uh, on my 16th birthday, mm -hmm. uh, my brother got me drunk off of a uh, brass monkey. Mm, my love. And uh, right after I got drunk, I just knew that I was gonna be gone for a long time. It woke up something in me. Mm -hmm. I can't explain it, but I knew that I was gonna be gone for a long time. I just didn't know when the journey was gonna begin, but that, that drink woke up something in me. Now, was alcoholism in your family? Was it a mother or father? Because you know, they always say that it's a generational curse, you know? So, so did you see somebody in your home or cousin or you know how we had them cookouts and Uncle Bubba he dancing around the fire you know you'd be like okay why is he dancing but we didn't know why he was dancing because he was full of alcohol so was it somebody in your family that you can remember because like I say it's a generation curse that's passed on to the next person. From my understanding uh, my father was alcoholic I didn't witness it he was an absent father but we are building a relationship now. Mm -hmm. But from my understanding, he, uh, he is alcoholic. Okay, okay. So you're saying at the age of 16, this is when everything started, okay? Were you a young mother at this time? Because you know, uh, we have a teenage pregnancy and you know, depression that leads to drinking alcohol or, you know, I understand you said it was your brother who gave you the alcohol at your 16th birthday. Is it just, your very, your, was that your very first time or? or? It was. It was my very first experience with uh, any mood or mind altering substance. Oh, you didn't use that big word. Yeah, girl. Okay, no, okay. <laughs> you just got drunk. That's what you said. Yeah, I got drunk. Okay, and yeah. And it was amazing because um, I was able to go tell mom. You know, nobody tells mom that we drunk. Right. You know? But I was able to say, hey, mom, I'm drunk. And I just want to let you know he did it. But you know... <laughs> And see, there we go with that blame game. You know, just like it started back with Adam and Eve. He what Adam told, if you wouldn't have gave me that woman. But you know and I know, people can't make us do nothing we don't want to do. But one thing I want to say is with, when I was on, in my addiction, it made me feel like I was king of the world. You know what I'm saying? It, it just made you, even when I get on the dance floor, I thought I was the finest thing out there because of that alcohol and the crack cocaine. So when you took your first drink did it make you feel like you was powerless or were you me being molested that's what helped me to soothe with my molestation had you ever went through something like that to to it's it's a reason why we get drunk and high it, it's always a reason we just don't wake up and say oh I want to take a drink so it's always a, a route to why we get drunk my experience has been that um, it was a way for me to hide um, I didn't know there was a need to hide, but hiding became my new way of dealing with life. It was just a matter of hiding. I was in low places doing things that I said I'd never do. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I, and you I said didn't this have is all to deal. I just didn't have to deal. And, and that was all at early age. At, at early age. Absolutely. But I'm looking at you now, you're pretty now, so I bet you was a pretty little girl with big ponytails, and, and so why would you want to hide at a, at a young age? You know what I'm saying? I didn't know I was pretty. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I didn't know. I tell everybody, you'd rather get a lick than uh, a word because that lick only lasts for so long, but if you get a word, it's going to last with you for the rest of your life. So at a young age, you think somebody told you that you was ugly? You know, for you to... Well, uh, my household was, was I, I'm, I'm pretty sure, normal because it was the only one I knew about. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty sure it was normal. But my household did not expose me to anything except they just wouldn't let me do what I wanted to do. Okay. You know, and I just wanted to do what I wanted to do. And I knew that when I, take, when I took that drink, I knew that there was some power that was in me mm -hmm. that let me come out and play. Mm -hmm. That's all I knew. Mm -hmm. and, and it didn't matter at that point, at, at 16 years old, who had a problem with it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I wanted. I wanted that courage mm -hmm. that I gained. And I didn't know that I was dealing with an obsession that was not gonna allow me to stop. Like, I don't ever remember stopping. Okay. From 16 until the last time I used, I did it, I went hard. I, I didn't stop till it was not anymore. Okay. And that's all I know about uh, addiction and alcoholism. But what I do understand now is that I didn't understand. Okay. Alcohol and drugs treated my condition. Okay. It wasn't nothing wrong. It just wasn't nothing right. Okay. You know, nothing satisfied me. I was never okay. You know, I'm sure mom probably told me that I was pretty, but I didn't hear her. Okay. She, she wasn't acting like I wanted her to act. So there was something in me that drugs and alcohol quieted. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, I was able to come out and play. And, and that's what I wanted to do for a long time. What I didn't want to do is become addicted. Okay, so now you're not, you're not the only child, correct? No. Okay, how many children? I wanted to be, though. Okay, see. I didn't appreciate none of them being there. But you know what? The more I keep <laughs> listening, it's like you just want to control over everything, Absolutely. didn't you? Ooh, Absolutely. Ooh, that's sad, though. We, I, we get like that, though. Okay, Absolutely. but how many children did your mom have? It was six of us. Too many, you know, and um, I was the middle child. And they, they never gave me enough of anything, again, enough attention. You know, I can look back on some pictures uh, that I looked at as growing up. And I, I just always had to be, you know, I had to have attention. You know, everybody else was just goofing around. And I was like, oh, the camera on. Mm -hmm. You know, but it was just something about the drugs and alcohol that, that quieted that storm in me and allowed me to come out and play. Okay. And it, it drove me for years. I, I did drugs and alcohol because I didn't understand that I was an alcoholic. I suffered from alcoholism and the drugs and alcohol treated my alcoholism. Okay. My irritable, restless, discontent, ain't nothing wrong, but ain't nothing right. It was something about the drugs and alcohol that shut it up. So, so I know what I remember when I was small, my mom and them had got us a little set of perfumes, all different little bottles of perfume. And me, at a certain age, I started drinking the perfume thinking I was at a bar. Now, how, you know, that's right. Then they, they should put me in bed Something before wrong. then. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody that drinks perfume thinking that they at a bar drinking something whiskey, wrong. something wrong. But they didn't nobody, that was a sign right then and there. Wrong. Betty yeah. Ford, you know. But, <laughs> but, and I'm being honest, you know, because, you know, if I can't be true to Blossom, I can't be true to you, you know. Absolutely. But it, it's something, I, I think because, you know, when it comes, coming from the South, when I moved here to Alabama, I hear, when you say, how many kids your mama had? And they say 11 and 12. I'd be like, how, well, how they had that many children? You know, that's the depression thing right there, talking about 11 or 12. But you say you was number what out of six? I was three. I was the middle. So you think you had to babysit a lot too. You think you depressed because you had to babysit a lot? What I think is that I thought too much. You know, I, I knew too much. I, I knew how things were supposed to go and they weren't going. And, and like I said, I just, there was just something in me that just wasn't never satisfied from the beginning. Mm -hmm. My mom was wonderful. Mm -hmm. You know, my sisters and brothers, they were what they were and that was sisters and brothers. Some things happened in my family that, uh, you know, when I was 17, well, when I was uh, 12, you know, my brother fondled me, did some things that I was not pleased and with. And that's the key word right there. It's with the, what you went through with your brother, so you was trying to cover up that. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And, and that's what I tell a lot of people, we can live in, a, in the, the most prettiest house on the block, but every time we drive into that driveway and we see all these branches and these leaves, we be like, dog, why my house so ugly? But until we get to the root of that tree and cut that root down, we're never going to have nothing pretty. There's nothing perfect. 
but we want some kind of semi what normal you know and mine was molestation because i used to couldn't say the word without going to get high oh bird got hit let's go get high you know so it's always a route to why we get drunk and high a lot of people talking about it's you know it's a no it's always a route to like with the molestation I tell everybody with my stepfather, you just don't wake up saying, I want to molest a child. Absolutely. It's something that happened. A seed was planted. So you have to cut it off at the root. But what I want you to do right now, I want you to look into the camera and I want you just to minister to a young lady that's going through, that went through something at a young age and just didn't realize that something was, she felt like something was wrong, but she just didn't know that something was wrong. So just minister into the camera and let them know. I just would like to say to any uh, young woman, female, if you are struggling with any drug or alcoholism, there is hope. Um, God delivered me from drugs and alcohol, September 30th, 2002. And what I realized today is that until I made a decision to turn my will and my life over to his care, was well, nothing gonna be right. So it took me all of that for this, for this surrender that I sit in this chair with right now to a surrendered will to God. It took all of that. You don't have to live like that today. God wanted to deliver me from a lot of stuff, but it was only until I became willing to surrender and accept his will for my life was I able to live again. Okay. You can make it. Amen, amen, amen. With that being said, we'll be right back. You raise me up so I can stand on my the sower, Michael Guido of Meta, Georgia, with a seed for the garden of your heart. Three little boys were caught in a storm. One started to cry and the other joined in. But the big brother said, stop your bawling. The Lord knows his business. He'll take care of us. And he did. One night, some big boys were crossing the lake and a gale swept down on them. They were terrified. But Jesus came to them walking on the water saying, don't be afraid. They received him into their boat and immediately it arrived at their destination. Are you in a storm? The Lord will come to you just when you need him. Take him into your boat, won't you? A seed from the sower has originated from the studios of the Guido Evangelistic Association, Meta, Georgia. Welcome to Creation Minute, I'm Eric Hoven. Was there really a worldwide flood 4,400 years ago? Skeptics claim it's all a myth. However, there's overwhelming evidence that indicates the flood really occurred. More than 270 cultures around our world have a legend of the flood. Geologists find massive erosion features all over the world. Coal seams span the entire globe, some of them hundreds of feet thick. On top of Mount Everest, they even find clams. Now when a clam dies, it relaxes and opens up. These are found in the closed position, 450 miles from the beach and five and a half miles above sea level. So was there really a worldwide flood? The evidence says yes. Why don't you let us know what you think at creationminute.com.
Hey, new guy. Shovel, right? Yeah, right. And I'm not exactly new. I've seen some action. <laughs> Your shovel, come on. Oh, real nice coming from a rake. Ooh, get these heavy leaves off me. <laughs> hey, man, my last gig, I almost got electrocuted, nearly drowned, and went head to head with a metal pipe. <gasps> huh? uh -uh. That guy never called 811 to see if it was safe to dig. It doesn't take the sharpest tool in the shed to call 811. Our guy calls every time he digs. The mailbox, landscaping, the deck. Oh, man, that was a big job. Oh, remember that? Oh, that was a big one. Yeah, I remember that. Calls every time? Cool. Calling 811 is so easy, any tool could do it. It's quick and easy. Calling 811 gets your underground utility lines marked for free. It makes every project safer for everyone. Calling 811 before digging prevents utility outages, legal hassles, and personal injury. Hey, safe digging is no accident. Always call 811 before you dig. I want to welcome you back. My name is Blossom. Like I said, my guest speaker is Miss Tammy. Hankins. Um, she's here telling her testimony, but like I said, I'm not the one to gossip, so I'm gonna let her finish telling you her story. Now, Tammy, I want you to act right, you understand? Okay. Because you know what? We have to thank God that we've been delivered. Because, you know, myself, God has blessed me with 11 years clean. So, how much clean time are you working with? I have 13 years. You so big. You a big girl. Yay! It's by the grace of God because I tell everybody it wasn't by, it wasn't. You know, we went through a lot when we was out there on the streets. And, and I let everybody know I enjoyed getting high. I liked it, everything about it. I just didn't like the consequences about it. I didn't like going to prison. I didn't like being an unfit mother. I didn't like going to rehabs. I didn't like being called a town drunk. You know what I'm saying? So what made you want to change? You know what I'm saying? Uh, was it your kids, a boyfriend, mama? church what i mean what was it it had to be something that wanted you to change that made you want to change when i think about it uh, i think about the prodigal son i just had a moment of clarity mm -hmm. i didn't mean to leave my kids for 20 years mm -hmm. and i'm gonna get tear eyed it's, it's okay i didn't mean to do that but, but you I know just, what you got to remember we didn't there's no perfect mother or no perfect father, because if Adam and Eve family was jacked up, I was going to be jacked up. So don't beat yourself up about it. You did the best that you could at that time. And like you say, you just didn't know. You didn't know no better. Yeah. So it's, it's going to be okay. Yeah. I had a moment of clarity. I just, I just realized that I just wanted to do something different. I didn't know how I was going to do anything different. And it was so funny um, that on, on the street that we were uh, using in the, the house that I ran mm -hmm. you know you know how that is yeah um i just left one day I, I i asked a guy that was in there randomly could he just give me a ride and i got in the car and i drove to birmingham mm -hmm. and i asked some people previous to that i had been asking you know who can help me and they told me alethea house and um back then it was a pride thing you just you don't ask for help right you know we was taught you know never let them see you sweat mm -hmm. but i was sweating Right, right. So um, I ended up going to Lethe House by a guy that was just randomly in the drug house that I that I was in, and um, I obtained five years clean mm -hmm. through Lethe House. Real grateful. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a ninth grade dropout. I got my GED through Lethe House. Mm -hmm. um, I went back to college. I made the dean's list. I became a licensed practical nurse mm -hmm. through Alethea House and the program Invoke Rehab. They sent me back to school. Mm -hmm. uh, it's some Tammies out there. And um, through Alethea House, everything I needed, they provided. Right. Housing, I needed a brand new start. I didn't need to go do nothing old. And they, they allowed me that new beginning. And um, what I did was I went through the program. I went to the housing program. I went back to school, became educated. And when I looked up, my kids were home. But OK, let me stop you right there. You wanted this. I did. And, and that's the thing that we have to remind and tell people. If we don't want it for ourselves, I don't care if mama wanted, it, church wanted. it, Children want it. We're not going to stay clean and sober. Absolutely. So you had got to that point where you wanted it for Tammy. Absolutely. Correct? So now let's go back to the kids. How many children do you have? I have four children. How old are they? They are 29, 30, 28, and 27. So when you start having babies at the age of 12? 17 years old. Well, you look good. What 17. kind of water you use? 17, girl. <laughs> okay. <I start> <laughs> but no, you, you look good. And I tell a lot of people, you know, 
I'm not no beauty queen, but I know I look better than some out there. And when and, and to I'll be turning 50 next Friday. But to have smoked crack cocaine, my ha my habit was $700 a day. That's a lot of crack to be smoking. But by the grace of God, we're sitting here in our right mind. Absolutely. Nobody had to change the diaper. Nobody has to feed us. And it's a blessing that we're able to sit here and tell our story, you know, because there's somebody out there that's going through the same thing, probably sitting there now with a, a stem in their hand, pushing it, you know what I'm saying, thinking there's no hope. But I, I, I'm just here to tell you that if he cleaned me up and cleaned my guest speaker up, he could do it for you, you know. So, okay, so let's go back. I know I had to jump in there, so let, let's go back now, you know. Now, okay, were you ever married? No, I, I suffered a lot of abusive relationships, too. Uh, in the lifestyle that I was operating in, wasn't nothing good out there. Mm -hmm. So of course I ran into baby daddies that, you know, uh, I was even raped, you know, at 17. Mm -hmm. um, one of the guys that my mom hung out with, um, he came and got me and picked me up to go clean out a club that they were having, you know, soulful explosion club parties mm -hmm. in to raise money for their club. Right. And uh, he raped me. He, mm -hmm. he took, he picked me up with my mom's permission took me to the building that they had just had a party in that night to clean up, but he raped me. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I didn't value me anymore. I didn't think I was of any worth and of any value. So everything that happened to me after that, after that I just called it fair game. Right, right. You know, I didn't value me anymore. So a lot of things I hid from at the age of set, from 17 on was just protocol. And you was already suffering with that from a childhood, thinking that you wasn't pretty enough, you know what I'm saying? So, so I, I could see the pattern, but okay, but with the kids and everything. So had you ever had a, a, a real serious relationship? Well, I got pregnant in that incident and I had my oldest daughter. And, and that's a blessing because so many women, they abort the child. And I, I commend you for keeping the child. That's a blessing. Okay. Absolutely. The devil is a liar. That's, is a liar. She is wonderful. Yes. She is wonderful. And um, so right after that, I didn't know how to be a mom. Mm -hmm. So I was always looking for somebody to rescue me. Mm -hmm. I knew I was going to do a a, a horrible job of parenting. I, it was just it, something in me that said, you can't do this. Right, right. So I was always looking for someone to rescue me. And uh, like I said, the drugs allowed me to just hide from it all. Right. I remember looking up and I had two kids. I looked up again and I had three kids. I, I got pregnant uh, with the second boyfriend because he rescued me from the first one. Right. You know, he had raped me and he had me in court saying that he wasn't the father. So he was like, I'm gonna take care of you and the baby. And I said, okay. Okay. And of course I got pregnant for him. Right after that, um, I, I ended up meeting my last two sons' father. We did uh, get married because it was so much ugliness going on in my life. I had uh, uh, custody battles going on because, of course, once he he admitted that he was the father, and we went to court, and they showed that he was the father, he wanted to take my child. Right, right. So I had to be rescued from that situation. So of course, we got to get married now. Mm -hmm. We got to get married now, sir, because listen, they're not going to take my my daughter. But it just went from one ugly scene to the next. And um, the drugs was just intervals. I just did that at intervals. And I remember looking at my kids one day and they were all sitting in the floor and this made me tear out. And I remember, I, I didn't think right. At a young age, running was just my thing. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to hide. Mm -hmm. And I don't care how big the mess was or how small it was. It wasn't nothing wrong at 16 and I wanted to hide. Mm -hmm. I just, they just wasn't doing it right. Mm -hmm. But um, I remember looking in the floor at my kids and I said, I gotta get out of here. I, I'm not gonna stay here. Right. I, 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 gotta, I, I can't believe that this is what I'm gonna have to be subjected to. Like somebody else did. It. Right, right. <laughs> you know, and so that went on another uh, run that I went on for years. And drug addiction, it just took me where I wanted to go and a lot of places I didn't wanna go. Right. And um, when I finally landed at what, you know, society calls rock bottoms, I had a lot of bottoms, right. but they just weren't a bottom for me. I had a moment of clarity. Right. I just wanted to be better one day, mm -hmm. and and I just wanted to do something different, and and that want to had to be God. Right. Right. Because nothing in me had enough sense to say something is wrong. Right. Right. But um, the grace of God just gave me a moment of clarity, mm -hmm. and said, "You don't want to do this anymore." And you know what? I don't knock. I don't knock any AA, CA, but I know when I was up under that bridge in that back seat of that car, that was God up under there with me. It wasn't Bill, because I probably had Bill out there smoking crack with me, you understand? But we have to realize that there's a power higher and more powerful than we are. We thought that the crack was powerful. 
Because it'll take you, it'll take you on a run. I, I went around the world and didn't even have a plane ticket. You understand what I'm saying? But with God, now I'm just being honest about it. I smoked crack and I liked it, everything about it. But now that God, and I'm not perfect because I still snap, crackle, and pop. But now with God, it's just being filled with the Holy Ghost. It's just something about being filled. Field because I've been filled with Boom Farm, I've been filled with <laughs> Mad Dog, <laughs> I've just been filled, but it wasn't the right thing. But just being filled with the Holy Ghost, and like I said, it just it's just a blessing, girl, that we could sit here and talk. And I'm not laughing about the situation, but we did some funny things when we was out there. You know, I'm homeless. We robbing another homeless man. You know, so just sitting back and just thinking about everything that God has done for us, and we're still here in our right mind. If we don't never remember nothing else, we're sitting here in our right mind. Absolutely. We're not scratching in places that are not itching, and we're not picking no flowers that nobody can see. You know what I'm saying? So just being grateful. And I thank God I can see that you're just knowing you this short bit of period of time, just how grateful you are. You know what I'm saying? When we laugh and talk. That's why I don't know why you're sitting on the stage being so quiet because you're not a quiet person you, you love the lord <laughs> I do. you love the lab and let the and i tell you all the time don't be painting that smile on put that smile on because you got a beautiful smile you Thank know what i'm you. saying and and it is what it is and i'm not ashamed to tell nobody or give nobody their props because you are a mighty woman of god and god's he's using you and going to use you even more you know so don't let nobody steal your joy you know what i'm saying continue to keep telling your story over and over and over and over again because that's why god allowed you to go through everything so that you'll be able to share your story not just here on this stage but out there in the world too you know what i'm saying he wants people to know if i did it for her i can do it for anybody you know so like i said with that being said we're going just continue to keep on and just let God use us. And like I said, with your kids, now what about your children? Where are they now? We are uh, building a relationship. Okay. Uh, 20 years, you know, when I left, they were five. And when I came back, you know, they were 20, right. 25. So, you know, uh, building a relationship with them is going to have to be God. Yeah, it, yeah. it is nothing that I can go to mama and say, mama, you know, how do you build a relationship with your kids when, when you left, they were five. Right. And when you came back, they were 20. Mama didn't know how to help me with that. Right. It was only God and his will for my life that has allowed anything positive to be built in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I had a spiritual experience with God. I know there's a gap between the 18 years and now I only have 13 years clean because I gained five years through Alethea House mm -hmm. and I relapsed. Okay, well with that, well, I want you to stay right where you at. Okay. Don't move, because I know you got some more to share, but we're gonna let them be able to go get some more coffee and okay. call somebody else okay. and tell them to come on back. Okay. They've stormed beaches, and freed countries. Protected the weak. And defeated the strong. Shown courage. And compassion. They've raised our flag. And our hope. They've been called Leathernecks. They've been called Devil Dogs. But above all, they're called Marines. America, service learning is helping students improve their grades and their communities. Service learning makes school exciting by connecting the classroom with community service projects. Before service learning, I was just an ordinary student causing mischief during class. After service learning started, I got so involved into it, I started paying attention more, picked up my grades. Okay, very good. Service learning absolutely drives academic success. Working together, students solve real problems, build new skills, and apply their knowledge in a whole new way. The great thing about service learning is it gives you this opportunity to go out into the world and do things hands-on. Inside the classroom and out, service learning opens new doors and brings learning to life. Service learning can make a difference in your school. Visit Learn and Serve America at learnandserve.gov to find out how.
like I said, I just want to thank y'all for joining in today. What we're going to do, we're going to bring Miss Tammy Hankins back so that she can tell us about the organization that God has opened up called A Vision of Hope. I'd like to leave you with this Jeremiah 29, 11. You know, it, I'm paraphrasing it. It's, he doesn't want to hurt us. He wants to give us a, a great end. So with that being said, we just got to remember that God loves you. I love you. And I'll see you again.